Hello, everybody. My name is Janine Horick, and I'm live streaming from beautiful Seattle, Washington. Welcome to Breath of Heaven, where we emphasize the ministry, person, and presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I see Brother Rial on the stream. I see JP. Welcome. So good to see you. You won't want to miss today's live stream about prophetic finders. Say what? <laughs> A big thank you to our wonderful growing community for liking and sharing videos. I encourage you to invite a friend to watch this exciting episode. You are digital evangelists spreading good news. So as I was about to fall asleep last night, I started hearing music in my head from Disney's Aladdin. So, of course, I searched YouTube and found the song, You Ain't Never Had a Friend Like Me. I believe God is encouraging me and some of you that he is our all-powerful friend in our corner. Okay. Today... Our guest, Kay Nagel, serves as Director of Prophetic Finders and on the leadership team of her local church, The Mission in Vacaville, California. Kay is a regular trainer at prophetic activation schools and conferences, including the School of the Prophets at Bethel Church in Redding, California, and School of Prophetic Trainers led by Jan McCollum. She was also the director of the Napa Valley Healing Rooms. Prophetic Finders can be found on Facebook and is under the Prophetic Company led by Dan McCullum. Welcome to the stream, Kay Nagel. Hi. Hello. I'm excited. This is really wonderful to be here on uh, your show. I'm so excited to have you when I... I knew I wanted you to be one of our guests. And when I asked you and you said yes, I was blown away and thrilled. So thank you for joining us tonight. Wow. So many people have no clue what Prophetic Finders is. And <laughs> I'd love you to jump right in and explain a little bit. Okay. Started and just fill us uh, in yeah i'd love to um i'll just say right up this is only the second interview that i've given um because the prophetic finders is so big and it happened very quickly that i'm really still organizing and taking it all in and really trying to um and that there it, there are so many pieces to this puzzle that how do you turn around and say what it is you do and uh, because it has to do with teamwork it has to do with finding the lost it has to do with hosting the presence of the holy spirit wow. it it includes training the prophetic it um it's so inclusive with so many things parts going on moving parts that i didn't know how to give an interview at first so I'm I'm very grateful and I'm very thankful to be under Dan McCollum, who is a yes. professional prophetic trainer. And he has, I have to say, he's just ha drilled into me again and again and again, values and protocols of the prophetic. And I feel like I had a good solid foundation before yes. um, he asked me to take over prophetic finders. Yes. So I went in there a little naive and kind of felt my way for the first few years. And um, I just, I, I, but the Lord had shared with me what was going to happen down the road. And because of that, I, I didn't really, I have to say, I didn't sweat the small stuff and I didn't worry about all the mistakes that I knew we'd be making. Mm -hmm. My biggest concern was keeping people safe. And uh, as I've gone along all of this time, it's, we're into it almost three years now, a little over three years wow. that it, that still has become probably the number one thing is keeping everyone safe. So every everything that I tell you about today, 
um, from values, protocols, strategies, procedures. Um, it's all based out of safety for the people that are giving the prophetic words, safety for um, the receiver as well as the giver, um, making sure they are protected spiritually and physically. And so um, again, we've made our mistakes. Those first two years, the Lord really gave us a lot of grace and uh, but they were harmless things. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just always so thankful for those little mistakes because I can look back and I know not to repeat things that I've done yes. or I'll learn how to do something just a little differently. But uh, anyway, um, yeah. Do you have any questions before I? Yes. Well, some people, they hear the word prophetic finders. They're like, what are you finding? What are you talking about? So can I, you, can, I can add to that. Yeah. I, you, you know, know I feel like there's radical so example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did, it, you, how did it start? That would be how I ask you. How did it start? Oh, this is actually humorous. Um, it started in uh, the activation classes that Dan McCollum um, would host once a month. And it was like a three and a half hour training at the Mission Church in Vacaville, California. Yeah. And everything was fun except this one. I mean, we had, um, at, we would meet, I think there was between 60 to 100 people on a given Friday night. And we would play hide and seek. We would hide rings. We would hide jewelry, hats, glasses, and it's somewhere within the church. And this is a very large church. You have um, classrooms, janitor hallways, in and closets and kitchens. And they would hide oh them. Goodness. Yeah, and we'd, we'd play prophetic hide and seek. And it was all fun. And he taught us how to look for multiples, um, double blind studies. Because sometimes, and I saw over and over, because I got a lot of this wrong. I was so excited when I get something right. And when I got it right, I was aware of everyone else in the room that got it right as well. And we started noticing the multiples that were accurate and realizing that in a team, um, when you are looking for something prophetically, it's best to do it within a team because you can do that, what we call double blind study. We look for multiples of the same item. And that isn't 100%, but that's something that we can go on, especially if it's something, let's say we had one, and I can say on here because I, I'm sure we don't have, I'm gonna say the bad guys, you know, tuning in to, to watch this, but we were looking for human traffickers. And I'll, I'll go into a little more of the things we look wow. for. And this one name kept popping up again and again and again. And his name was Wilson. And what he did for a living, we had the, the color of his vehicle. We knew what he drove. And um, that, um, I, I think I received that name probably 10 times. From so you say like from multiple different people when you yes. say you look for multiples. Yes. So these people one, are praying individually. Yes. And they yeah. believe they hear from the Lord. Correct. What I do now is ask for information on Messenger and we'll tell them nothing specific, just the first name and uh, maybe a last name, but separate. If you have a first and last name, you private message us. If you have a license number, that's to be private messaged. If you have just a number, um, those are things that I look for doubles on um, or email to us. But then I also host um, conferences and I can speak there. And at the end of the conference, I will present one of our searches and I'll yes. ask, um, I'll break them into teams so that you're not getting everyone giving the same answer. Um, I've learned also in prophetic groups, when you get them together in large masses, that one personality that is just exciting and vibrant, people follow that. They will follow it blindly, even though Holy Spirit has spoken to them and said something different. They will follow um, the charismatic personality. Okay. So I've just been very aware of that and careful about that. And I'll break them into different teams and pose the question and ask them um, 
to independently and stand on their own to give their information. And then at the end, sometimes I'll ask them to come together as a team and to, I have to say, almost like vote on the name that they got. And then they'll bring them in. And that name, Wilson, appeared again and again and again from all different sources from all over the United States. So I knew that this was the name of the guy that was in charge. So it was, um, it, it's got, yeah. So back to your question, how did it begin? It was in this activation class that Dan McCollum and he presented the finders. And he'd been doing this for a couple of years before. Yeah. Um, we had a police officer in the congregation. And he would take this information and run with it. And he found a few missing children in the town of Vacaville. And so wow. yeah, we were excited about it. it was just a, a new way to use the prophetic. And uh, because we would well, prophesy. You saw, you saw it. It's awesome. I mean, it's so awesome because you're um, using the prophetic not only to um, edify and uplift the purse, the people around you, but we're using that extra gift to look at um, colors, numbers. We're uh, able to travel in, in time. You know, if, if we're able to prophesy looking back for a way uh, a year or two and prophesy ahead a year or two, um, we can prophesy distances too. And wow. I'll, I'll go there in just a minute, but taking that and actually looking for um, an identifier to help save a life is different. So he handed over um, or he gave this uh, assignment to the class and it was a missing child. And he asked for three things, the name of the, the car, the color of the car, I should say, um, the name of the person and the state that they were living in. I missed all three. I hated every moment of it. It was brutal. It, I felt like I crashed and burned. And I decided that if he ever did this to us again, I was going to hide in the bathroom, the ladies room and wash my hands for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and then we got out and um, so, I, I mean, you're, you're given this assignment <laughs> and you go and you pray and say, Lord, will you show me the name of the car? Uh huh. And I got nothing. Okay. I, I, I did. I'm, um, I took a stab in the dark and I think I probably said white when it was green. Okay. I think I said um, the name Daniel and it turned out it was Michael. I mean, everything I, I went for, I crashed and burned. Okay. And then a few months later, he came up with seven um, assignments to hand out like homework assignments that we had to meet on a monthly basis. And he just said, okay, I feel like this should go to you. And I, I actually was like, is there something else? <laughs> and so I went home with this and each week we were supposed to give um, an accounting of how it's going and our team that we were assembling for this. And the other six groups that he put together, they were flourishing. They were having pizza on Fridays. They were soda and pizza. And I, I was just hearing crickets. No one wanted to join my group because it, the other ones were subjective in their prophetic gifts. Like uh, one was prophetic um, uh, medical devices, uh, shifting the atm atmosphere, um, prophetic business assignments. I mean, there were some different things. Mine... Um, I couldn't, I couldn't beg anyone to, to join me. I was about to throw a lobster party just to get someone to come over. So I was fasting and praying. And um, I just heard the Lord say, um, start your Facebook page. And so I started it. Um, actually, late at night, I got down and it, it, typed it all up on the computer. And I went to bed. And when I got up the next day, I think there were 50 people. Wow. And by the, the second day, there were 200 um, by the next Friday, um, this several months had gone by and I walked into the mission and Dan was asking for kind of an accounting of how were our groups going? How were the teams going? And um, I he asked each one and they were slowly going down. Each group was, you know, like running out of steam. And uh, he asked, how many do you have on your team? Now, the average number for teams were three to five people. And I said, 500. <laughs> and, and from there, it went up to almost 5,000 people. And we actually, I see China. We had um, um, some testimonies in China. And I think the name just inspired people to 
think outside the box. And Prophetic Finders wasn't just about finding people, but it was about finding lost items. Uh, we found a lost pet. This That was an amazing story. Um, missing children and then going after human traffickers. And we're about to go into um, finding minerals in countries and finding wow. the lost resources for, for countries um, to start growing because the Lord is really focusing on growth at this point and revitalizing economies, especially in countries that have never really seen it before, you know, not, not in our generation, yes. but anyway, um, yeah, that's where we are. And exploded. Yeah. Can you, <laughs> You mentioned the pet story. Can you briefly tell us that? I would love to hear it. Yes, yes. Now I'm going to share something again or something in a minute um, that we have discovered through prophetic finders. And um, but this pet story, we received a message that a woman's pet had been stolen um, in Oregon. She had let, she left for a couple of days, left her neighbor in charge and put the dog, um, in her barn. When she got back, her dog was missing. The bed was missing and the leash was missing. Someone came in and took the dog. It's not a runaway. Yeah. And so we put our team on it. I think at that point, um, well, we had several hundred people going in looking for this dog and, um, I backed up and I, it was that night and I saw the dog slip under the, the gate or slip under what looked like a flimsy chicken wire and drag himself out. I saw him run to the end of the, the driveway, turn right and head right. The words the next morning that I read were the same thing. The peop, they were all over seeing the same thing. And when and, you say the words, you mean people wrote in? Yes prophetic words that were um, uh, messaged. And so I messaged the woman. I knew that this was a confirmation of what had taken place. And I said, your dog is coming home. She messaged, she says, he's not here yet. And then later on, um, we got the word that the guy that stole the dog is going to return to try to take the dog again. And she messaged back and said, uh, he just came here in a white truck. And she said, I didn't think to write his license number down, but he was pretending to look for his missing dog. Okay. Right after that, her dog came out of the, the barn. Apparently he made it all the way home and was hiding in the barn. I, I don't know, exhaustion or whatever. But that, we didn't realize something at that time. As we come together as a prophetic team, there is so much power as a team. There's yeah. um. um uh, that's why I, I have this one scripture that I read this morning and it just fits what happens when you come together as a prophetic team. We are unstoppable. And as we've come up with words, um, prophetic words to do a search, especially for human traffickers, I, before I've even turned the information over to anyone, FBI, human trafficking, before any of that takes place, there are busts taking place in that region or in that state, right and left. We don't even have to turn our stuff in at that moment. I mean, our goal is to get it in as soon as possible. But in the spirit, things are breaking because we've come together as a team. I th we're seen, I think, in the spirit as an army. I think we are um, an unstoppable army. We're, we're like... There are no fences that can hold us as a group. Everything goes down. Um, so just calling things out in the spirit um, releases it. It's like ripping the lid off of um, something that's been in the dark and a light shining on it at that point. So, so would you say one of the primary focuses of prophetic finders is human trafficking? Um, it's not the primary focus. Um, it's, it's one of ours, uh, yeah. our, I mean, our heart is for it or every child that's been abducted or yeah. taken to come home. Yeah. Um, yeah. we, when I said, when we first started, I've, we've made our mistakes and I yeah. say, we, we own it. We all own it together. Yeah. Um, but one of those is being invited into the search. 
Uh, when I first started, I went to that uh, National Registry for Missing and Exploited Children. There are thousands of children that are missing. I just started posting them and um, that's where I made my mistakes. A lot of these children are um, either taken by a family member and the others know where they are or they're runaways. And the parents have to um, call and say that my child is missing by law or if they report their child missing, that's an important thing. Um, it, the other is um, if it's a missing, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of those stories. There was a young girl that was missing um, and I, we found her. We, we um, she was in Lodi, California. We found the house. Someone called out the address. They even knew the name of someone. And I went to this young girl's Facebook page. I wasn't invited to do this. I took it on myself and put presented it to a huge team. And because of multiple sources of the, the name of the place or the address, um, the name of the person that she was with, um, I was very confident that we found her. So I reached out to her family on Facebook. They wrote back, how dare you search for her? It's none of your business. <laughs> I know. I'm like, who does this? But you know what? There are family dynamics that we don't know about. Yeah. It may be a season that that child has taken it upon themselves to run away because of something that's happening in their life. So we've learned to intercede. There are some cases we simply intercede and we don't go into it unless we are invited. Um, we'll reach out and um, I'll wait for that invitation. Um, yeah, that, that's a big one. I think there's something spiritually happening when we are invited into it. We are given a grace and we're given open doors. When we're not, um, we're, I, I feel like we're stepping into someone else's vineyard that we're uh, unin uninvited guests. And yeah. it's, uh, it's usually a struggle at that point. But wow. yeah, that was a lesson. So another one, I'll just give you another example. <laughs> um, I waited to find, um, it's not always easy to find someone that is missing because of the, that criteria. The teenagers are just go, leaving again and again and again. Um, so bringing them home, again, the most important thing is intercession. Um, mm -hmm. The missing children, it's um, it's a smaller group missing than we are aware of, just because usually it's a family member taking them, but they are there are kids that are missing. Yeah. So we really have to do our due diligence to find them. Um, the missing adults, that's a tough one, because usually when an adult is missing, um, we've discovered that they're deceased. I mean, you know, it's not always, not always, yeah. but it's the, when we're looking for someone, it's a messy situation sometimes. Sure. So waiting to be invited. Um, yeah. There's hope there and we're able to find them. And most of the people that we take on, they're all um, living their lives somewhere else. They're with someone and it's just our job to help find them. Wow. So there was a, I, I was looking for our next search and found yeah. her. It was um, the FBI was looking for this young girl. The family said they were looking for this young girl. And um, we put it out there. We had it coming in from Australia, from New Zealand, from uh, South Africa, Canada, um, identifiers to locate this young girl. And we found her in Atlanta, Georgia. And that was really amazing just wow. to and found the school that she was in. We found the item that she could see from her window every day that mo a number of people called this one item out. And it was this, um, it was a Ferris wheel. And there are only two places in the US with this specific Ferris wheel. Wow. And they didn't know that we were already aimed at Atlanta. So that was just confirmation. Um, the, the look of the building, the number of the building, we found her. I reached out to the family members. There were a couple things that we received that I just held on to because they were so weird. One of them was the family was involved with this abduction. And so it's like you file this, you just put it away. Okay. And we uh, actually 
reached out to the family and they didn't get back with us. So I was able, that's why when you're, when you're, we're invited to into a situation, we simply wait to be invited. I'll, I'll put the invitation out there for the family to say, do you want us to help you out? Um, yes. if, yeah. And that's when we go in. Um, but that's when I started looking at human traffickers at, for our teams, because we're able to, when I noticed when we get involved, things happen. Um, oh animals, children, adults, we find them. Uh, yeah, human tra for human traffickers, um, it's like they can't escape us. Now that we know that little secret, they cannot escape. So we started going after human traffickers. And it's, um, you don't have to be, um, I always tell everyone, take a risk, step in and just go for it. You, you are in such a safe place with our team. And it's like iron, iron sharpens iron. Um, even if you get it wrong again and again and again, by watching what others post, you may recognize I was thinking that and I didn't write it. You know, it helps you to kind of um, re reassess how you're thinking, how you're seeing and feeling. And um, yeah, it's we have so many different people that are on our team. And the cool thing about Prophetic Finders, sorry, you can see there's so much here. So many. No, it's very exciting. Wow. Is the prophetic. Um, we are able to utilize those that see internally, externally, and in the mystical. We're able to use everything. And I'm amazed at those, um, our team members that come can in. You for those people who have no clue what we're talking about, can you explain <laughs> what you mean by internally, externally, yes. and mystically? What is that? Absolutely. Um, how to describe some of this. Um, internally, you'll, I'm, I'm just going to use uh, a name, for instance. If I'm sure. training you on how to um, prophesy through a name, as you are praying for someone and you don't know their name, you might hear their name inside. You may be impressed inside that Corinne is the name. You just kind of like hear it inside. Okay. Um, it, or you may see it written. I'm just going to, you know, uh, written on a book. You may see the name Corinne. And okay. why was your name, why were your eyes drawn to that? Then there's the mystical where you may see it printed over their head, the word Corinne. Okay. And that's happened. Um, there are so many different prophetic groups or on people that are on our teams that and things that I've never done before or experienced myself. So it's fascinating just to watch them in action. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. So. So. I think I spoke with you about this a little bit, but what would you say to somebody who jumps into the stream and is like, what? These people are crazy. This is divination. And we're forbidden to do this. What would you say to them? Excellent question. Um, I would say that there is nothing Nothing that the enemy has that is original, not one single thing. Everything is stolen, stolen from God, everything and um, um, repackaged. And it was first given to us. It's just that sometimes, um, you know, I'm going to just say, well, it's easier to deal with what you can touch and feel and hear and taste um, and that becomes so much, uh, your awareness is so much there that uh, having something supernatural happen to you, you might realize I'm getting along fine in life. I have not needed that. And that can go on through many, many generations that when something supernatural happens to you and probably has been for quite some time, you've just learned how to turn that little light down and keep it snuffed out a bit um, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, when you're finally trained to, I'm just going to use hearing a name, when you're tuned in and really saying, Lord, let's work on this. Um, teach me how to hear. 
teach me how to see in, in my spirit, teach me and I will listen. I will, I will pay attention to what you're doing. And Janine, when you said when you first came on that you heard that song as you were going to sleep last night, you were conditioned to listen and, mm -hmm. and to know to go look that up and look up the meaning of that name. So mm -hmm. it really pays to, if you he see a course that's being offered on the prophetic, or if you're um, uh, hear of someone talking about it, listen and ask Holy Spirit, partner with him and ask Holy Spirit, what do you want me to get from this? Because there are so many different levels of learning and you may be right here when you think you're down here. You may, you may be more in tune with Holy Spirit than you realize. And you may have so much more to offer um, a prayer team than you realize. So, but um, when it comes to, you know, the, the enemy stealing what was rightfully ours to begin with. Yes. God never backed out, backed up from us. He was always right there. And as he was increasing the power around us to move in the supernatural in this area, he didn't say, oh, I'm going to put this on hold. He kept moving on so that when we finally said, yes, I accept this assignment, it was all there. We just have to prepare ourselves with the word of God and faith and action all combined. And then God's like, it's all there. It's all ready for you. I just want you to be mature. I want you to use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in everything that I give you. And he's just going to keep increasing, increasing, increasing until you are that unstoppable force. And he'll partner you with you. And the cool thing about being on a team is you will experience things by yourself that will isolate you and make you feel alone. And I think that's one trick of the enemy is to make you feel wow. like you don't have the support. You don't have the backup wow. being on a team and being in a group that says yes to the Lord. You can share with them your experiences. You can share with them and, and get wisdom back. Yeah. And they may have already been through this or yeah. they may be going into it next. So hearing you, it's a yeah. family. It's like the best family in the world to be a part of. And this is biblical. I'm thinking back to Elijah and Elisha. There was a school of the prophets. So this concept of community and learning from each other, this has been modeled before. Right, right, yes. right. I, the other thing I did notice, the first time I went to the school of the prophets, which I would suggest anyone that hears about it, you've got to attend at least once in your life. Um, first thing that I experienced was my level of the prophetic and my prophetic dreams went through the roof. It was an amazing time. And um, I've always been a prophetic dreamer, but that school of the prophets, I, I just felt like a kid in, it was like, oh, I was in summer school with 600 of my best friends. <laughs> Weird and wonderful best friends. Like but, men or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So anyone that does listen in or, or, or is watching this, check out School of the Prophets. It's at, out of Bethel. And um, what you come out of there with will inspire you um, just to fast more, pray more. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say speaking in tongues. Yes. Um, the, the activations are mm -hmm. um, groundbreaking for some, some things and life-changing, absolutely life-changing. Wow. I, I think I told you this, but somebody said to me, this is just weird and strange. And I said, well, even Saul in the Bible, he went and consulted the prophet to find his donkeys. So this is this is biblical <laughs> straight yes. out. So yes. now you also mentioned minerals. What's happening with that? That is another interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Finding minerals in other yeah. countries. Yeah, yeah I um 
you know, I look back and um, I always hope that something that I say will help someone else because I feel like I've been in college most of my life with no spring break. Oh my goodness. <laughs> At this point, I'm thankful for it. Um, but the, I always thought I was going to be a minister um, to minister about the tithe and what the tithe does. And um, because the Lord moved in speaking to me all the time about the tithe and giving me full demonstrations. And I would hear um, his voice inside. I, he would speak audibly to me of why something wasn't working. And every time I heard him audibly, it was about scripture. It was confirming the word of God. And I would hear him in spirit where it was closer to my ear, but it was so much. And I wondered why he took so much time with me on the tithe. And then recently he was sharing with me how to do something, uh, not just in my own personal life, but on a broader scale. And it was about countries. It was about looking for the minerals. It was about, I have to say, there's a game. I've never played it. I've only seen it on a commercial called um, uh, oh, Forge, something about Forge. It was about building cities and, and deciding where the grocery stores go and the banks go and all of this. And I did, the Lord had taught me to do that in my own personal life. And I wondered how this was going to expand out or if it was ever going to be used. I just thought it was something personal. He personally trained me in. And then I had a minister, Michael Dalton, who um, met with me um, a, a couple of, about two months ago. And he said, the Lord says, it's time to start using the designs to design countries and pulling their minerals out and their gold out to revitalize their economies and to wow. raise up their nations. And I realized this isn't just me. This is about our team and uh, um, it, putting it out there. So we're going to create, we're going to focus on one country at a time and ask everyone that participates to decide where these universities, where these banks, where these um, grocery stores, where the economy is going to flourish and what is in the land that there will be seeds to plant there that they have never considered that will be nurtured and nourished from, from the soil, from the minerals in the ground. So it, again, this is it's teamwork that does this. And when we work as a team, things happen. And I believe I believe that there are angels and the Lord said prophetic finders that he had trained angels to be under us as a team to do this. So that's why these things take place even before we've reached out to law enforcement. But for the countries, I believe there is an army of angels that's ready to move on these countries to raise them up and to move um, and to move ministries into these countries. Yes. And not one person has the answer for this. It take, takes a team wow. that to wait on the Lord and to, to, to ask him, what do you feel for this? What mm -hmm. do you feel for that? And what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you knowing? Um, yes. Anyway, I, I, I always feel like I'm giving the long answer. No, for that's it. exciting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw my dad posted, he said, that God is restoring fullness in all areas. So, amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thinking the glory of the Lord covering the whole earth. So, yes. Yes. Um, wow. Yes. So, I think we're going to start seeing things that we have only dreamed about and things wherever there is, I'm going to say, wherever there's been a negative movement. It's because something powerful is about to go in there next. It was supposed to start, but with the enemy trying to decide ahead of time how to discourage us and to squash that, um, the excitement. No, that now inspires me to say that's our next spot. <laughs> yes. That's the next thing that's about to break. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Anna Kate. Love you too, Anna Kate. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's amazing. And Holly Marie, wow. I'm going to read some of these. 
Yeah, we've got beautiful people on the stream. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm I'm I just thought of this. It's a funny thing. My mom the other day, she could not find her sunglasses and she had looked for them for a month. And she doesn't lose stuff. And she said to me, Do you know where my sunglasses are? And I said, Have you checked the back door, the pocket in the back door of the back seat? And she's like, No. And it just an impression that just came to me. <laughs> and she checked it, and sure enough, there were her sunglasses. So I, I knew that was from the Holy Spirit because. I wasn't thinking about her sunglasses and why would they be in the back door of her car? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah that's cool. On our team, I have um, told everyone it's more than okay to get it wrong. More yeah. than okay. Because there's a feeling that comes with getting it wrong. You, um, and then there's another feeling when you get it right. And the more you practice, the more you practice looking for those sunglasses, the more you recognize when you say, yeah. oh, I see it on the kitchen counter. You're like, oh, that didn't feel right. But when you get it right, it's like this smooth sailing, this feeling of just gliding on air. Yeah, we've noticed that. So it's yeah. it's okay to practice and get it wrong. You know, there was a uh, I don't have the scripture with me, but it was one that um, if a prophet gets it wrong, stone him. I don't think this is what, you know, what they were no. talking about no. because I, I've, I was raised in this. So it's not like I have that fear of should I, could I, that's never been there. No. But I have heard along the way, some people that have been attacked from that scripture that if, if you get your prophecy wrong, take that prophet out and stone them. Have you ever heard that? I've heard that scripture. Yeah. And it, it's not, I don't believe that it, this is what that applies to. I no. believe that that was something completely different because as, as we're being raised up and learning, it's like a child falling down again and again, they're yeah. going to be on the Olympic team one day. They cannot yeah. be there without learning how to stand on two feet and taking those yeah. tumbles because they learn what that balance feels like going front yeah. and back. And they know that they're sure of how they're standing yeah. at that point. It's the same thing in the prophetic. I believe it's referring to a false prophet speaking falsities like blasphemy against God not missing it necessarily or like you said training yeah yeah wow can you give another example of um maybe a thing that was lost or found that somebody asked boy there's so many um <laughs> we're just in the we're in the process of putting a book together wow. um another one oh yes okay this is a good one um, this is a young girl, and I can say the locations. I'll try not to say the name. Um, her mother reached out to us to help find her daughter, her teenage runaway. This was um, actually, this is the first ones that we experience are usually the most, um, um, uh, we, we love to talk about them because our mistakes are just, they're funny and they're fun yeah. at the same time. Yeah. We, and at the end of the story is she ends up home. She ends up asking, accepting Christ as her Lord. It's really a, a remarkable story. But this young girl had gone in, was lured out by human traffickers and her mom was looking for her. And we dove in, and this is where my two um, co-directors, Rob Spur and Nathan Zink, are just phenomenal in the way they handle things and their um, their wisdom. They're, they back me up in so many things and um, they jump on a case and they know how to organize a team. He It was when I first met Rob Spur and he said, I see um, a house that looks like, and he said like a blue trim, has like a reddish door and there's a small lake nearby with a popcorn um, concession stand down the street. And so I told her mom in this one, I had her mom join our Facebook page and follow us. 
so that she could read everything that was happening. And she was texting me privately saying, um, we'll go search in that area. And they did find the house. Wow. And she said, but my daughter, we missed my daughter by a couple of days. Well, Rob Spur texted back, and I didn't really know him at the time that well. And he says, now I see a house that is a gingerbread looking home on the ocean. And I see palm trees. And the, his description was so like, here's one description of a, this. And then here's another description. And uh, it was so vastly different. So her, his mom, uh, um, this woman's mom called me personally and said, um, I, you don't realize it, but we have a private investigator that's actually following everything and has been reading your posts. And you have, uh, this person in Australia has been spot on all the way that her daughter had gone to um, the Outer Banks and uh, on the East Coast of the United States and that she was there for about two weeks and then came all the way back home. So Rob Spur in Australia was following this girl back and forth and she was a runaway. So she, we were She's just in Australia praying to God. Yes. Yes. He's the East coast and then the West coast, East coast and the West coast. And then he said, I see pine trees. I mean, palm trees, pine trees. He was all over the map. Yeah. And at first, when I first read that, I thought, ah, oh. <laughs> why is the mom following this? We're going to look like a bunch of quacks. But she said, he's spot on. This is exactly where my daughter was. And now she's back in Washington State. Wow. Um, so it's um, it's it's just what been it was a roller coaster, but the daughter is home now. That one paid off. Um, wow. And that's why I said it was after that that I realized we could just keep going. Uh, teenagers, you it's important important to keep interceding for the teenagers. Yeah. Keep them in your prayers. Um, uh, your prayers matter. Your prayers definitely make the difference for the kids. Mm -hmm. And they have so much more to face nowadays. That's one thing um, that... Um, we've noticed that they just have so many more opportunities, the cell phones, um, their influence is just difficult um, yes. to manage sometimes. And also that's why, how you said it's important to be invited in. Yes. Yes. So you have yeah. the support of the family and law enforcement potentially. Exactly. Yeah. And we yeah. get invited in either by the family member or, um, that they the parents are openly on the news pleading for the return of their daughter or their son. Yes. Um, or it's a family friend, but we do not do the search. And um, you know, I said at the beginning, it's all about safety. We do not do the search. Yeah. We and and uh, we we have to have someone that we can hand this off to that they can do something with it, and it has to be someone that is safe like law enforcement or the family and yeah you know i'm still working with that because sometimes we don't get sometimes if the news isn't the best news i don't think i want the family watching i want yeah. to hand this off to an aunt or an uncle or a best friend yeah. um, but it, the the cool thing about prophetic finders in in a team like this yeah. we are trained to get actionable data we don't have to go to the dark side to, to get yeah. information all we are trying to retrieve are numbers, colors, cars, names. Yeah. Um, and that's, we don't have to give a backstory on how this began. We simply have to give something to help locate this child. So we have a, a lot of prophetic finder teams that are starting around the United States. Wow. And that's the number one thing I tell them is if you find someone that's coming into your group, and you're praying about something and they're bringing up the backstory of the negative on how this began, shut it down, stop it right there in a polite way. You can do it in the, in the best way and just redirect them to ask Holy Spirit, what is a color that you can give me? What is a car type? Do I see a series of numbers? And ask for actionable data, something that you can actually hand off to law enforcement. And... Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, like I said, there's so much <laughs> in this. I still can condense it into yeah. something that I can actually describe what we do. Wow.
I'd love to think of um, an example of one of the most unusual things that you found. Oh, wow. Person. Let's see. We did a drug seizure in wow. Australia. And it turns out, I'm trying to recall the, the sequence of what took place. Um, we were looking for highway names, um, vehicles, numbers, license numbers. And it turned out that we followed it into a bay and it was on a ship, a shipping container that came in and the refrigerators were full of drugs. That was it, brand new refrigerator. And they found them. They found them, yes. And wow. I'm not quite sure um, if we had even reached out to law enforcement, I'm not sure because we were taking so many cases in, but because, as I said before, just because we got involved, just be because we stepped into that arena, we won. We already won this battle. We yeah. didn't even have to reach out in um, the physical to say this is what's happening. Wow. I, I'm positive this was turned over. It was um, Rob Spur, who's now one of our directors. Obviously, I ha had to have him <laughs> as one of our directors. Um, he took this information and uh, handed it over to law enforcement. Wow. But before that was handed over is when that bus took place. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very important just to be interceding, um, yeah. call things out. And, and as I was saying, speaking in tongues is so big. It is so big because you're able to, Holy Spirit's able to speak through you the actionable data and call things out, out loud. And you don't even realize you're saying them. But the angels that are assigned to you and the angels that are assigned to that child that you're praying for or over that household or that business, the, there are angels assigned to everyone. But that angel may be handed off that word and, and your, your angel that's watching over you may say, hey, I've got this sword. She just spoke it out. I'm going to hand it to you. Take it and run. And because it's Holy Spirit speaking this out loud, it is the word of God. And the angels are activated by the word of God. Maybe not necessarily my words, but the word of God they are. So they'll hand that off. And I think that's, I'm pretty certain that's exactly what's taking place. Wow. That's amazing and exciting. Yes. So how can people find you? I've got listed in the description below um, your Facebook link. Is that the best way that's the best way okay. um we we'll post when we're doing our next search um if there's a missing person just dive in just go for it get in the, get in the, the the mix there and um sit sit back for just a moment just say a prayer lord is there something that you have for them is there is there do i have that missing piece wow everyone sees in part not all of us see the full picture, but each of us coming together, maybe see a piece of that puzzle and just yeah. ask, what part can I add to this? And then see if there's something internally that you see. Give the Lord a mo few moments. Don't just race through and then listen for something. See if you know something. Wow. See if you feel something. And then just step out and say, Lord, will you physically show me something? And it may be in the spirit where you can see through it or hear it. Or it may be something that has happened to you. Like you hear a TV in the background say a name. Or you see a car drive by at that exact moment and you just take note of that car. These are all identifiers. These are all things that the Lord uses because there's so many different ways we prophesy and experiment with that and go ahead and just dive in. It's a great way to train. It's a great way to train also because you'll recognize, like I said, when it doesn't feel right and you can come back later and nobody knows you and nobody's judging. They're all, I have to say, they're all judging their own words. No one's <laughs> looking to see who got it wrong. Not one person. They're looking at their own words and, um, they're wondering, did mine, did, were these words correct? 
And it yeah. doesn't mean they aren't correct. It just means that that may be a, something that is happening that can't really be used. But it's like looking at a situation from many, many different angles. And you mm. may be seeing it from one angle that no one else is seeing. So dive in. It's a great training tool. Um, we're looking for a young woman right now. I believe you pronounce her name, Sun Sanea. She went missing about two and a half weeks ago and her parents are Christians. They're spirit filled born again believers. They've been having prayer vigils wow. and um, they've not heard from her. So um, um, someone, uh, we've got a few that have, um, that are looking and uh, so jump on there and just ask Holy Spirit, partner with Holy Spirit and, and see what he gives you and put it down. So. Wow. So good. Yeah. I would love, I, I just, as you speak, it rolls off your tongue, just the depth of supernatural encounters and it's so natural to you and part of your everyday life. And I was wondering if you could pray for our audience just to that impartation, that, that hunger and increase and expectation. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. This is my so favorite. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So um, I'm glad you don't have a time limit on here. Buckle up, everyone. No. No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Here, here we go. And um, I, I, when I pray, I don't just pray a little tiny thing. This is it. I, I, Hallelujah. sometimes I feel this is my only moment with you. So I want you to have the absolute very best. Yes. So Heavenly Father, we come before your throne with thanksgiving and praise. Thank and Lord, we just, we praise you. Oh, we are, Thank you. we are so overjoyed that you have invited us into this life and all that you have planned in your heart that you are fulfilling through our lives, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Now, Heavenly Father, heaven is filled with the hosts of heaven and those that have gone before us, Lord. Lord, there are anointings, covenants, promises, vows, blessings that have been in our family lineage going back through every single generation. Not every one of them has been used and fulfilled. Lord, we ask that you send in the angels of heaven into the book room for the books that have been written about our lives and the books that have been written about our family generational lives, even family that we are not aware of. Father, we ask that you bring these books out. We ask that they be open before your throne right now. We ask that the hosts of heaven start reading through these books and the things that were neglected, abused, um, just not used or misused, Lord, not fully fulfilled. We ask that they pull them out and start reserving them right now for you, yeah. Lord. Reserve them, Lord, because they're going to call them out for the, everyone that's listening right now. Heavenly Father, I ask for your permission to meet with us in the courtroom of heaven. And Heavenly Father, I ask that you uh, give representation for everyone. Holy representation, Father, because the enemy has used a, um, a sketching board on how he wants to um, maneuver um, an attack or um, something on each person that would slow them down, hinder them, or stop them. So, Father, let the books the accuser has been reading out loud be open before you right now. You said whoever we forgive, they are forgiven. So with the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Yeshua, we forgive the sins of our forefathers, not just four or five generations back, Lord God, because we know these sins can keep hopscotching. But Father, going back through the beginning of time where sins began, and Father, we forgive with the blood of Christ. We wash these books the accuser has used, any adultery, any lust, any lying, any theft, any murder, any rage, any pride. We forgive with the blood of Christ. Father, there is going to be more. Let each person be reminded of what these things are, adultery. Let the, the, each person be reminded of what's in their, to their knowledge in their family past and things that they're not even aware of. 
But Father, we forgive with the blood of Christ. Let these pages be cleansed from these books, ripped out and thrown into a fire and never to be repeated again. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that there are witnesses to testify to these books, these pages that have been burned. And with the blood of Christ, let the, the, uh, um, the, the boards that have been written for each life be erased. Let the enemy be sent into absolute confusion, Father God. The things that have caused each one to be deaf or blind or mute, Father God, I now, in the name of Jesus, remove the cotton and the wax out of everyone's ears. With the sword of the Spirit, I cut off the scales from their eyes, and I cut off the scales from their heart. Let their mouths be opened and unlocked now. Give them a discernment that they will know, they will know, they will know. Heavenly Father, give them 2020 vision into the kingdom of heaven. Let them see what is taking place in the heaven, in the throne room, and in creative ideas in these in these rooms, in these offices, Lord. Let them see it the, into the medical research. Let them see into um, uh, even uh, new inventions, Lord. Let them see what is taking place in the with their eyes, with their spiritual eyes, Lord. They, take them to the third heaven and let them now have heavenly experiences. Father, let the angels of God Reveal themselves to each person that is that is uh, receiving this prayer. Let the angels say their names out loud and let them look those names up because they have meaning. Heavenly Father, now let each person here step into their anointing. Now, Father, I remove in the name of Jesus every knife, every dagger, every needle that has been stuck in their back and in their heart. Give them a heart of flesh and take away their heart of stone. Let them not see through rose-colored glasses anymore, but let them see through your eyes and let them hear, hear the word of God clearly. Let them hear you speak. So Heavenly Father, I thank you that they will put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation to keep everything clear, to keep it safe, the breastplate of righteousness, the waistband of truth, shod their feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, which is your word. And they can speak it all day long, Lord God. And mountains will be moved. Now, Father, I ask that you meet with us back in the throne room. Father, the hosts of heaven have been reading out loud these anointings, these covenants, promises, vows, and blessings. Father God, I ask that they come forth now. They come forth now and be placed in the books of everyone that is listening. Place those in the books so that they come up to this generation now. And if even in their children, place these names or these anointings in the children, Father. And Lord, let them be multiple, multiplied in such a great measure, Lord God. Because as I said before, you have increased, increased, increased with your, what you, your plans are. And Lord, let these anointings now step into that increase. Let these anointings match that and bring us up to speed with great wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to handle all that you are placing on each one. Now, Father, let doors be open for them. Let doors be open for them where no door will shut, Lord. Let them step into their metron. Let them step into their, their mantle and let them step in with such power and surround them with similar anointings. Surround them with a team and surround them with best friends, Lord, that they can share and they can grow together in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, one last one, Father, any of these things that have been removed from their lives, if they're continuing now, they're illegally trespassing, yes. illegally trespassing. And Father, I ask that you send in the angels from heaven to guard each of their homes, including mine and Janine's. Let the angels cover, cover the houses. Thank you. Under your wings, we take refuge, Lord God. And we just stay there in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Amen. It wasn't going to be a short one. I had one no. chance to get in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to replay it. Hallelujah. I I believe in impartation. So yes. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes. Thank you. I believe that I am where I am now because of impartations. Thank you. I believe that. So they're, they're important. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you so much for coming on, Kay. Oh, I know, no. I know our audience, some of their minds are blown. And they're going to be looking you up and saying, what? <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, well, it's been, this has been an honor and thank you for, um, yes giving me just this opportunity to share yes. i've not known really how to present this before oh, yeah. Like, yeah. No. and like you said it's deep and wide and so varied so we're yes. we're so privileged i know um when you have your book ready to publish i'd love to have you back and we can share some more Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I think it'll be a, a book on um, uh, experiences and training. Wow. So exciting. Well, thank you. And I will be right back with um, information about next week's broadcast. So, well, thank you, Kay. So thank you for joining all of us. And for liking our videos, please subscribe so you can be first to know of upcoming broadcasts. Next week on Breath of Heaven, we are extremely honored to feature Pastor Tom Ingalls of Sydney Life Church in Australia and founder of Psalmody Ministries International. Pastor Tom is a powerful, prophetic, anointed minister who speaks a life-changing now word. May the breath of heaven, the creative Holy Spirit, breathe in your life. Be blessed.